Imagine a pill that could make you smarter, more motivated, less forgetful. Turns out that pill supposedly already exists. They're called smart drugs, also known as nootropics. They are big in the business world and on college campuses all across the country. And now the rest of us are starting to take notice. I definitely think it could be a good thing. Who doesn't want to improve their memory and brain functions? Smart drugs are exploding all over the web with lots of promises. But can you take them seriously? This brand pledges powerful focus and motivation. This one says it improves concentration fast and almost all have a money-back guarantee. But can you really trust them? Online marketers are targeting you, so what do you really need to know about so-called smart drugs? Today we're talking about drugs, the good and the bad. This pill, that's what it looks like, claims to hack your brain to make you smarter. Advocates say these smart drugs improve memory, clarity, focus, attention, it's better than coffee, they say, and there's no prescription with them. So it sounds pretty appealing. Let me ask the audience, you guys are so good about these things. Who's taken these nootropics? Who's tried one? Let me start with you, how are you? When, when do you take them? Um, I take them before I sit down to work. I work for myself, so it's hard for me to focus usually, but when I take them, I can write for hours. And do you sense any difference? I see a difference, it's subtle. It's not like Adderall, where it's like this huge difference, but um, it just keeps me focused. And, and why do you take Adderall? I don't take Adderall, I oh. used to in college. You used to, okay. <laughs> but, I, but I see a big difference between the two. All right. Yeah. Uh, who else, Megan? Any, any side effects that you've noticed? No, I just get really focused without the crash of things like coffee, so I love it. Yeah, perfect. It's not sort of appealing, doesn't it? Well, let me do a little experiment with you guys. Let me show you how these smart drugs claim to work. Who's good at puzzles? You good at puzzles? You know what, I'm gonna use both of you. You start first, come on up here. <laughs> Because you're both good at this. Actually, you know what? Step for one second, just for the demonstration purpose, sit down him. What's your first name? Leticia. Leticia? Yes. Okay. Leticia, there's the puzzle right there. It's a 12-piece puzzle. Should be pretty straightforward, I hope. Ready, go. Put it together. Now, the reason I'm asking you to put the puzzle together is to do this, you have to simulate the whole brain. You gotta get your visual perception right, see things right, you gotta be coordinated to put them in the right spot. Your memory's important, so you know what you did before, what didn't work, what can do better. Critical thinking, so you're actually able to match things up. Right? Now this is the thing, puzzles aren't as easy as they seem sometimes. She's got it there, now, now you broke the back of it. Awesome. Don't you like that part of the puzzle when you, the, the last little pieces fit together? All right, you got it. <laughs> Just to be complete, yeah, give her a hand. Now, Leticia, I want you to take that puzzle that you made and I want you to break it apart. Break it back apart because we're going to do something different. So you did it by yourself. The argument for why these smart drugs work, these nootropics, is that maybe it's like having more people help you do things. Turning on brain cells that otherwise we sort of sleepy. So two more people, come on up here. What's your name now? Jean Marie. Jean Marie. You think you can do better? I, I can help her. You can help her. <laughs> one more person, one more person. Come on down. Who's up? Come on, come on down. <laughs> All right, now here we have it again. I'm gonna put the club, I mean, fix this up a little bit, it's not so easy, all right? Now, you ready, all three working together? Go. Take the top. Take, take the top. And with three people working together, they can focus on different things. Oh my goodness, that was fast, you got it. <laughs> all right. Now, again, it's a metaphor, it's not a one-on-one, -on -one, but is it easier, I guess, doing it with three people than one? Definitely. Plus yeah, you, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so that's the promise, that's the thought. It's the extra brain power that a smart pill might be able to give us to be able to multitask and do things faster, quicker, so we remember better, we can focus better, we can get things done more efficiently. Yeah. That's the claim, that's yeah. the claim. All right, grab a seat, because I'm gonna turn to an expert. Now joining me is neuropsychologist, Dr. Salim Hafez, who's been studying cognitive functioning for over 10 years. So increased memory, I heard it from members of the audience, focus, able to get through difficult times, why would I worry, it seems to work, soft claims, but pretty bold promises. What does the science say? At first glance, science says yes, that they do work, that these smart pills make you more attentive, more focused, more clear, even help with memory. Hmm. But that's at first glance. Um, research is funny, you know, research can make you think that something really works, but a magazine says, well, 50% of our consumers love this shampoo. What they may not tell you is that they tried it on two women in their office, and so technically, if one liked it, that's still 50%. Right. So you have to be very careful in how you interpret research. So go over what's actually in these smart pills. 
So there's L-theanine and caffeine. So we already know that coffee makes us alert. So research shows that in combination in high dosages, they do promote attention, very specifically visual attention, kind of what you were just doing, this visual Impossible. spatial attention, yeah. And, they, and it's also Bacoba Moneri? Bacoba Moneri increases, well, they, it says, research says that it increases memory. Uh, but when you look at the research, it actually decreases forgetfulness instead of increasing memory, which is an important distinction to make. It is. Yeah. Right. They also have creatine. Creatine has been shown to increase some cognitive functioning, but when you look at the research, it's done more on, let's say, sleep-deprived or the elderly, so it doesn't necessarily translate to people like you and me. Right. People who are already f hopefully functioning at a normal yes, level. Yes, yes. And finally, ashwagandha, which I know is a very popular herb in other parts of the world. Yeah, so ashwagandha actually has some good science behind it. It was shown in a, in a study in 2012 uh, in a large sample size. It showed that it reduced blood cortisol serum levels, mm -hmm. which in turn reduces your response to stress and anxiety. So the less anxious you are, the less stressed you are, the more you're able to focus. So I was curious to see if these smart drugs worked, if they actually worked. So I enlisted one of my core experts to take them for three weeks. Did they work? You guys curious? Today we're talking about drugs, the good and the bad ones. Nootropics, their so-called smart pills, are becoming the new it drug for anyone looking for mental clarity, focus, attention, and better memory. But do they work? Life coach and one of my core team members, Tia Brown, took one brand of smart pills for three weeks, and this is what happened. As a life coach, I'm a strong believer that we can all do little things to improve ourselves, even work on our memory. So I went online and ordered one of the top selling smart drugs, Alpha Brain. Now at $30 a bottle, this better work. The drugs arrived a week later, but before taking them, I met with neuropsychologist Dr. Saneem Hafiz. Hi. Hi, I'm Tia. So she could perform some baseline cognitive tests and see how smart I was before taking the smart drugs. Are we ready? First, a quiz to test my nonverbal problem solving. So you need to pick which one of these best fits into this box. This involved analyzing pictures and patterns. I had to figure out which images went where. I'll go with C. The next quiz tested my executive functioning. This is time. I'm going to give you a pencil. I had to connect numbers and letters in ascending order, all while being timed. And finally, a quiz to test my memory. Oh, it's not so bad. No. It involved tapping blocks. Tap the yellow row first before moving on to the red row. <laughs> and, in, oh, and I'm not done yet. And trust me, it was a lot more complicated than it looks. You did very well on the block tapping test. After all the tests, I popped my first pill. This better help. And to document any mental improvement during my time on smart drugs, I agreed to keep a video diary. It's day two. This is my fourth pill I'm about to take. It's day four. Eh. It's week two and I'm seeing a little bit of improvement. I plan to keep on taking them. But of course, any real cognitive improvement can only be measured by cognitive tests. So I'm back to Dr. Haviz's office for my second round. Hey, I remember her name, so that's a great sign. Let's see what happens. An hour later, Dr. Hafiz had performed the test and calculated my results. So, did smart drugs make me any sharper, quicker, smarter? Today, we're sharing my results. I'm anxious to see the results. Tia Brown is here. So why did you agree to, do, to take part in this little experiment we had? Who doesn't want to be amazing, right? Yeah. Everybody would love to be their best self. As a life coach, I'm a huge advocate of self-improvement. So anything you can do to make yourself better, you should try. All right, let's get through the results. You excited about yes, this? Yes, I am. The I results am. of the Smart Pills experiment. The moment of truth is here. Neuropsychologist Dr. Sadim Hafiz is back. Thank you for joining us. All right. So based on all that cognitive function, all those things, are you ready to hear this stuff? Okay. Based on all the testing you did, <laughs> What do you think? What difference did these pills make with Tia? Well, let's go to the screen. First, nonverbal. What are nonverbal? Those are the ones where she was moving the blocks around? And... Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. So nonverbal looks at your visual spatial skills, your visual spatial memory, um, let's say how you do a puzzle, how you look at a map, how you look at a graph or a chart. Um, and so we tested Tia in different areas of nonverbal functioning, fluid reasoning, problem solving. So she's smart, she did pretty well. <laughs> she's smart, she's smart. So, so this is uh, the baseline, about 100. And then she took the smart pills, and then let's look at the post-test scores. Oh! 
Oh. How do, but, what, is that is that a big oh. difference or a small difference? So, to, to the naked eye, it can look like, well, 100 to 104. Well, that must, must mean that they work. Um, but four points is really not that big of a difference. It's negligible, really. It could be from oh. practice effect. It could be a fluke. So you're okay, smart yeah. to begin with. You're still smart, but yes. not a heck of a lot smarter. Okay. 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 And then, yes, another, I know you did another, a whole bunch of tests you did. Yes. Um, processing processing speed. Processing speed, which is really fluency, your reaction time, how fast you can do something. Um, so let's look at Tia's uh, baseline functioning. 45, 45 seconds. seconds. So I'll put my hands like this. Oh, wait. Oh, she, she's fast. <laughs> she is <laughs> fast, right. <laughs> and which, well, after taking and the pill? Post-test. She got slower? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> she slowed down? Yes, we did not expect to see this. Yes, Are we taking sedatives or anything else or just a smart pill? <laughs> better, better life through drugs. <laughs> All right, so w w the summary is, did they make Tia smarter? No. No. It doesn't look like it did. Um, you know what I think? These smart pills are like coffee on caffeine. They make you more alert, more awake, but not necessarily smarter. So we reached out to Anna, they're the maker of the smart pills alpha brain that Tia was taking. And the CEO of the company, Aubrey Marcus, is actually here. And by the way, Aubrey, thank you for coming. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Yeah, my pleasure. So what's your initial reaction to these results? Well, we, we conducted two double-blind clinical trials on Alpha Brain, where they put people like Tia, healthy adults, 80 of them, through a bunch of tests just like the ones that she was doing. And what we found was specifically it improved verbal memory, uh, some different processing speed tests where they actually hooked people up to an EEG, and some things like executive function. For some reason, it doesn't fit with a person's neurochemistry. Um, we offer probably the easiest money-back guarantee in the world. Thank you again for coming at least to talk about your perspective on this. So let me talk to Dr. Hafiz for a second here. Uh, so if someone's watching right now and they think they have a deficit, they're not quite where they think they should be, well, would it make sense for them? It may work for them because most of the studies actually show that they worked on low baseline people. Now, Tia, her baseline wasn't low. Her baseline was pretty okay to begin with. So that's not necessarily all of us. So let me give you my thoughts on this. If you're taking a smart pill and you don't have a deficiency, it's sort of like putting anti-aging cream on a baby's chubby cheeks. <laughs> you won't get the kind of benefit you're hoping for. I am curious about folks who aren't functioning at full speed, though. Thank you for taking time to do this testing and for doing the experiment itself. Yeah, appreciate it very much. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss out on new videos to live the good life.